Good morning. Please join me for a word of prayer. Almighty God, most gracious Heavenly Father, Abba, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for Jesus who truly is the hope of the world. And Father, may we anchor our lives in that hope, that hope that is your Son, that hope that guarantees life, not just for our time on this soil, but for all eternity. Thank you for that gift of love so many years ago that you sent to us that we might be able to see and to hear and to touch you. Thank you for his willingness to walk the long, lonely road to Golgotha to lay down his life so that we might find life. Father, we pray for those that are struggling this week. Father, it's been a difficult week here in the lives of many families. And so we pray, Father, that you would intercede, that you would wrap them in your arms, that you would allow them to know this hope, but Father, also to, to know that peace that only comes from you. Allow them to feel your presence in a very real and meaningful way. Touch them and bring healing to them in only a way that, that you can. Father, continue to be with our leaders. Oh, how we need you. Thank you for the young men and women of our armed forces and their pledge of their very lives, if necessary, to defend ours and our freedoms and our very right together in this place on this day. Father, for those of us who have come here, and it is every one of us that is carrying some sort of burden, some sort of heavy load, may we hear from you. May we feel your love, your grace, your mercy your tenderness. Lift our burdens. Stand us back on our feet. Help us to walk in that hope and in you. So Father, just now, we long to hear from you. Would you allow your words to be spoken through my voice? Would you allow your words to rain down upon us in a meaningful way? We ask that your spirit move in this place and in the hearts of each one gathered and even those that might be touched later by watching us online. So Father, just now, please come and share with us in Jesus' name, amen. Advent. It's that season of the year leading up to Christmas. The word Advent itself is derived from, from a Latin word, Adventus, which means coming or appearing. Advent today refers to that season of, of anticipation and celebration leading up 
to the day we have set aside, December the 25th, to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift of God that was given in full love and grace that we might find life. But Advent isn't just about looking back and remembering. Advent for the follower of Jesus Christ, those of us who have committed our very lives to following Him and to serving Him and to walking in His way is a longing for and a looking forward in hope of His return. A day, a time that we're told through Scripture when He will firmly establish His kingdom, claiming His bride and bringing judgment upon the wicked. Today I want to focus on that word hope. Today we live in a world where We need hope. We live in a world not unlike the the world that was looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. A world that confronted God's children, His chosen people. They were living under a powerful and oppressive government. There were strong Secular ideologies that were being presented to to draw them away from worshiping God and worshiping others, especially the emperor. The religious leaders and leaders of that day were, were seeking to promote whatever was necessary for them to stay in power, to hang on to their prestige and their authority. To use their position of authority to to build their, their influence and their financial coffers. And it didn't matter who they were having to walk on or at whose expense they were seeking those things. Over the centuries, God had has time and time again, in their life and in ours, sought repentance and a return to honoring Him. In their day, the first thing He gave them after they had settled the promised land were were the judges. And Once again, we would see an oppressive government come in and, and they would cry out to God and return to Him and God would send a judge to deliver them. And that happened over and over again. And then came their first earthly king. And Saul, who who was all about himself, oh, he may have started out well, but he didn't finish well. And then there was David, who who stumbled at times, but he was was a man who sought God's heart. And we can hear the heart of this king throughout the Psalms that he wrote. And then God sent the prophets. With, with a very similar message, return to me and, and I will return to you. But if you continue to reject me, a time of judgment will come. And a time of judgment did come. The northern kingdom was scattered throughout the world and lost. The southern kingdom was taken into exile in, in Babylon, but, but they weren't left without hope. God always gave them this this precious gift of hope. But it wasn't anchored in this world. It was anchored in Yahweh Himself. This Christmas season, we're, we're not too different. It's a nation, it's a world actually, who, who finds many of the same situations that were going on before Christ came the first time. There are many who find themselves living under powerful and oppressive governments around the world. There there is a movement that would have us abandon the truths of God and follow man-made ideologies or or twisted understandings of, 
of God's Word and God's commands. Pulpits around the world no longer proclaim the, the standard of God, but instead proclaim a gospel that merely tickles the ears of their listeners. They simply speak what people want to hear. Many have come to believe that maybe it's too late. They may say to themselves, what's the use in even trying anymore? But God has sent us a gift of hope in His Son, Jesus Christ. The world is not without hope. The United States of America is not without hope. But we must turn back to the one who is our hope. The one who came as a babe so long ago. You know, we hear that word hope and and we begin to define it and understand it in our 20th and 21st century mindsets. Most modern dictionaries define hope as to cherish a desire, a wish, with great anticipation, a a longing for, a a wanting, but no guarantee that what I want and what I hope for will come. You see, it's a sense of wanting something to happen, but an uncertainty of it, whether it ever will. Yet that's not the understanding of hope that those who saw Jesus for the first time or heard those speaking prophecies about the coming Messiah would have understood. The most common Hebrew word for for hope is yehel, and there should be a slide, which expresses to wait expectantly. It's a little different than anticipation. This await expectantly. You're expecting. You're, you have that confidence that what has been promised will come true. To wait expectantly for something, to hope with confidence is what it means. Too often we understand that word differently. So we, we in today's world see hope at times as empty. We long for it, but we don't expect it. We desire it, but we doubt that it will ever happen. Yet when we seek to fully grasp hope as one longing for the promised Messiah, that was the message of hope that was being given by the prophets to the world. Not not just to Israel, to to the world. It was more than a mere, I want it to happen. It was an understanding that that there was a time when it would arrive. And they could anchor their hope in that promise. Jesus is more than a mere desire we anticipate. Jesus, through His work on the cross... as he he went there and gave his life, became a guarantee of our future. Our hope is secure. There's no doubt in it. We just haven't fully recognized that hope yet. A hope that is expressed, I believe, from a Hebrew mindset in the words of, of the psalmist as he writes these words in Psalm 130, 7 through 8. O Israel, you could possibly read it, O my children, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is unfailing love. Now does that sound like something you don't expect? Unfailing love means that that love is coming to you. It is guaranteed because that's who God is. 
His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. Will. Not maybe. Will. And that's the hope. He hasn't realized that hope yet because the Messiah hasn't come. Christ has not gone to the cross. And yet, in his heart of hearts, deep within his spirit, that spirit that connects with God, he knew this was true. And he hoped with great expectation of the day it would come. The psalmist writes, not with a desire that these things might be true, but he believed with every ounce of his being. He waits because his hope is not in a man or or a circumstance or material things. No, his hope is anchored in Yahweh, Almighty God. And how does he know this? Because he has experienced Yahweh. He's experienced Yahweh's truth. As he looked back over time and he's, he saw the miracles and the many things that Yahweh had done for his people. He experienced that truth of Yahweh's unfailing, relentless love for him and for his people. Which allowed him to say with great confidence that Yahweh will redeem us. The essential notion is that Yahweh is reliable. He is worthy. He he can be depended on. You can, you can, in terms of today, take him to the bank and know that that deposit is secured. Trusting and hoping in, in Yahweh is an expression of, of, of great faith. Faith described as things hoped for, yet not yet seen, but will be seen. A confidence. Such action on Israel's part means enduring patiently in the confident hope that God will act decisively in the salvation of His people. That He will deliver them. Likewise, when we see hope in the New Testament, it is tied to that unwavering faith in not just the promise of salvation, Don't miss this. Not just in the promise of salvation, but in the one who is salvation. The one that they were able to hold as a baby, watch grow into his toddler years and his early youth and his teen years and ultimately into a man. New Testament hope looks forward. Yes, it looks back because that's where it anchors the truth and it finds that truth that it can anchor itself in. But it looks forward to with great hope and great longing to Christ's reappearing. So how can we today be certain of our hope Well, we can do the same thing that people of the Old Testament, people of the first century did. Our hope is firmly anchored in the truth and the foundation of God's Word, of His Scripture, as we read of God's faithfulness, of His covenant, and as we read of how many times He continued to love and deliver His people. Paul would speak of this very fact in Romans 15, 4. For whatever is written in former days was written for our instructions. The Scripture, the Old Testament Scriptures, that's what Paul had, that's what he was referring to, were written for their instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of Scripture, we might have hope. A guarantee. 
guaranteed hope. We will know who God is. We experience God through His Word. Scripture shares with us not just guidelines on how we should live our lives in a, in a lost and dying world, but it shares with us the experience of, of others have had with Almighty God and His faithfulness. Abraham called to a strange land, going no, no, nowhere that he knew, and yet God was faithful. Joseph, throughout all of his struggles, God was with him and delivered him and placed him in second command of all of Egypt to deliver a people from a great famine. Moses led that nation out of bondage 400 years later. The people of Israel would hear the words spoken to Joshua as the mantle was passed from Moses to Joshua. And it says this, the people will clearly see that as I was with Moses, this is God speaking to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And Joshua experienced God's faithfulness as he led a nation into the promised land to conquer it. Then there was the period of the judges, and again, we witness God's faithfulness in delivering His people. Then came the prophets who sought with everything that they were to, to lead God's people back, including those religious leaders who were not being very good or very godly leaders. But they also would proclaim the coming of the Messiah, the one who would change everything, the one who would give life for all eternity. The Word of God written down so that we might come to know and experience Yahweh in our own lives. And I believe anyone who has ever come in contact, truly contact, with the Savior of the world has experienced many wonderful and truly faithful things from God. Look back through your struggles and see if God didn't show up and remain faithful to you. But it wasn't just enough for it to be written it needed to become real. This word lived out so that we could see it, spoken so that we could hear it and understand it. And John, in, in his one sentence description of Christmas, writes this in John 1.14, as we read last week. And the word, and the word of God that created all things, including you and me, became flesh and dwelt, did life among us. And we have seen, we have beheld with, with our own eyes, we have touched with our own hands, maybe not us exactly, but through the, the experience of those that were there that day. We've beheld His glory. Glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Savior is authentic. He's real and we can anchor our hope in Him. And with those words of John... The prophecies of Old Testament Scripture were fully confirmed. In, in that moment, in the advent of Jesus first appearing as a child, over 350 prophecies were fulfilled by this one single life. And we can know that God is faithful and true to His Word. This was a child for which the world had, had been longing but they weren't looking for Him in this manner. And so many 
missed him. But they had been told. Scripture had spoken to it. And, and spoken to the fact that this Messiah wasn't just for one group of people, but it was for the world. Later on in Romans 15, we find Paul referring to the prophet Isaiah's words in Romans 15, 12 through 13. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, and him will the Gentiles hope. Look forward with great anticipation. May the God of all hope fill each of you with all joy and peace in believing, in trusting, in placing your faith in Him so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in that hope. You may live in that hope, that guarantee of the future. A future in God's kingdom. A future of eternity in the presence of our Savior. The hope to which Paul speaks looks back as it speaks of the the root of Jesse, the birth of of Jesus who came through the line of Jesse. But it also speaks of eager expectation of the future hope that we have. A hope that we find and abound in, remain in through the work of the Holy Spirit. In a blog titled, Hope Lives, a gentleman by the name of Major Dalton writes this, Authentic hope is a hard thing to kill. In the heart of one who knows that outcome, in the, one of, in the heart of the one who knows that outcome is not driven by perception or circumstances, hope must be immortal. And then he shares a little example from the Star Wars saga. Kylo Ren, the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia, has embraced the, the, the evil, the dark side of the Force, and he's bowed to the, the power of the Sith Lord named Snoke. He dons a, a black robe and helmet like his grandfather, Lord Vader. Ren believes he has crushed the rebellion once and for all, but Snoke knows better. Returning from an apparent victory from the dark side, Ren is chastised by, by his great mentor and master. Snoke says, you are no Vader. You're just a child in a mask. Kylo Ren responds, I give everything I had to the dark side. To which Snoke replies, Skywalker lives. The seed of the Jedi lives, and as long as he does, hope exists. The seed of God lives, folks. Lives in the the resurrected body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, and as long as it lives, we are guaranteed hope for the future. And that hope is real. And that hope is something we should long for daily. We should pray for daily. The end of Scripture says, even now, Lord Jesus, come quickly. How many of us are willing to pray that prayer today? Our hope does not promise us life that is easy and filled with nothing but joy and happy times. It's it's not a cakewalk in this world. In fact, Jesus would would tell us, and He would say this often, if you choose to anchor your life in Me, if you choose to build a relationship with Me as Lord and Savior and as King, you will most assuredly have difficult times and struggles in your life. You can't avoid them. Why? Because the world hates Me. The Prince of Darkness wants Me dead. 
And if you are mine, then He wants the same for you. And so you will face times of, of struggle and you will taste, uh, uh, taste persecution. The world will hate and despise you and seek to persecute you at every turn. But Jesus says, be at peace. Anchor your life in me. Anchor your life in hope. Because your future is bright. And your future is secure. Paul understood the truth of our Lord's words that if you devote your life to me, it's going to be a life of struggles. And there were times when, when Paul might have gotten low and, and discouraged, just like we do. In fact, I believe there's a passage of Scripture that, that Paul expresses that in, in, in 2 Corinthians 4, beginning in verse 8. We are afflicted in every way, but because of hope, I inserted that, but because of hope, we're not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Because we always are carrying in the body the death of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our bodies. So that hope of our future would always be a part of us. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what was ri- has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak. Knowing that He who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into His presence. Our hope is anchored in Christ. There is a future, but only in Jesus. Not in the world. Not in other ideologies. Other faiths. Only in Jesus is there true hope. It's a great story about Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the Russian writer who spent years in a Siberian prison. At one point, he'd become completely discouraged, and he decided to give up on life. His plan was to stop working out in the field, which probably would have meant his most assured death. So one day, he leaned on his shovel, and he waited for the guards to come, and beat on him until he was dead. However, when he stopped, another prisoner reached over with his shovel and quickly drew a cross at his feet and then erased it before the guards could see it. Alexander would later say that his entire being was energized by that little reminder of where his hope is and the courage that we have to face each day in Jesus Christ. He found the strength to continue because a fellow believer cared enough to remind him of our hope. A hope that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, as he said in a prison, one of Hitler's prisons during World War II, just just days before he would be put to death, And he would pen these words to his fiancée. And I want to share them with you. A prison cell in which one waits, hopes, does various unessential things, and is completely dependent on the fact that the door of freedom has to be opened from the outside. is not a bad picture of Advent. We need Jesus in our lives. That's where our hope is. That's where the promise is. That is how we will survive 
this life and whatever the world has in store for us until Jesus returns. Shortly after penning those words, the Nazis entered, executed Bonhoeffer. But he was, he was right. The door of freedom for him and for you and I today is still opened, not by the world, but our hope in our Savior, Jesus Christ. In our hope and in our advent as we look back and remember the birth of Jesus, but more importantly, we look forward and long expectantly the second coming of our Lord and Savior when He calls us home and we can stand with Him for all eternity. I know life is difficult. Some of you are going through a lot of struggles right now with family and loved ones. But there is a hope. Anchor your lives in the living Savior. And celebrate Advent as you look forward in that hope. to the return of Jesus. We're going to go into a time of response here just after I pray. And as the praise team comes and, and sings, it's an opportunity for you to spend some time reflecting on what the Lord might be speaking to your heart today. For some, maybe it's, it's that initial step of faith. You want that hope. You, you want to be secure in that hope. It comes from that personal relationship and that step of, of faith. Hope and faith are not separate. They are, they are linked. To step out in faith and accept Him as Lord and Savior. Maybe for some of you, we, we just need to be re-strengthened in our hope that we might go out and and be the hands and feet of our Savior to love, plain and simple, in our community. Maybe you just need prayer. It's been a difficult week. Whatever it is, as we sing here in a moment, will you take that opportunity to respond to your Lord? For those who might be watching us online, that response is for you as well. Would you give us a call here this, this week at the church? We'd love to spend some time sharing Scripture with you, the love of this Savior, and time in prayer. Will you join me now for a word of prayer? Father, for the gift of hope, who is Jesus, we give you thanks. Take us and use us for your glory. Take us and use us to spread the message of hope in Jesus' name, amen.